In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace.
peace be with you. And with your spirit. A warm welcome to St Mary's Basilica in Sydney, the Mother Church of Australia, for this Mass halfway through our Plenary Council, the fifth for this nation. We continue to listen to the Holy Spirit speaking to us in our listening and discernment, our dialogue and debate, our word and sacrament, and to implore that Spirit's wisdom for all the members of the Council. We also ask our national patrons, Our Lady Help of Christians and St Mary MacKillop, to intercede for the Church of Australia at this time. And we join the Apostles today asking the Lord to teach us. And celebrating with me are the bishops and vicars from Sydney. Due to lockdown, very few others are able to be with us. Conscious of the call of our baptism to be saints for our time, let us first repent of our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are perfect unity and true charity, grant your faithful one heart and one mind that the body of your church, which rests on the confession of the truth, may flourish in harmony and be made strong in enduring unity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the Apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire, these separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven, and at this sound they all assembled each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans? How does it happen 
that each of us hears them in his own native language. Parthians, Medes and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and when he had finished, one of the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, Say this when you pray. Father, may your name be held holy, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive each one who is in debt to us. And do not put us to the test.
The Gospel of the Lord. One of Karl Marx's daughters once confessed to a friend that she had no religion and knew nothing about it. Unsurprising, given that her father was the inventor of atheistic communism. But she said to her friend, the other day I came across a beautiful little prayer, which I very much wish were true. And what was that prayer, her friend asked. Slowly, Miss Marx began reciting Unse Bata in dem Himmel, Our Father who art in heaven. Lord, teach us how to pray. The apostles ask in the gospel today. For they knew Christ was the best of teachers. Of the 90 times people address Jesus directly in the Gospels, they call him teacher 60 of those times, a title that he also used for himself. For our plenary council then, Christ must be our wisdom and guide. And so we say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Jesus responds, pray like this. God, our protector, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We are all too aware of the unhelpful trends in our culture, the hostility or indifference to faith, told in the rapid rise of the nuns with no religion, and moves to exclude those who have religion from the public square. The crisis of affiliation, practice and vocation most apparent in the shortage of young adults at church. The turn against Christian reverence for life and love in law and practice around abortion, euthanasia, marriage and more. Christians pray every day for God to protect us from evils within us, committed through us, or going on around us. Christ responds with the gift of his church to protect us in danger and console us in trial. Protecting God, renew your church in Australia today. Deliver us from every evil. Keep us safe from sin and from all distress. But avoiding bad things isn't enough. We also want to pursue the good. And so Jesus said, pray like this. Provident God, give us our bread and forgiveness that we need. Christians intercede before God to shower his blessings on the world, his opportunities and mercies. We think of those most wonderful gifts, 
the daily bread of the Holy Eucharist and the daily forgiveness of sacramental reconciliation. Gifts for which we've hungered during this pandemic and that our plenary council is so concerned to ensure will be widely available in the future. Christ gives us his church to provide for physical, intellectual, moral and spiritual needs through families and parishes, schools and hospitals, Finney's vans and social services, orders and movements and more. Provident God, renew your church in Australia today. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. The God of Christianity is our Father, a God with us, a God for us. Our plenary council is all too aware of the threats to his favourites, the little ones and poor ones for whom he is especially father, the unborn, newborn and disabled, mentally ill, frail elderly and dying, the trafficked and refugees, indigenous or homeless. And so the master taught us to pray God who converts our minds and hearts, may your kingdom come and will be done in and through and around us. We try to do his commandments and be his beatitudes and so inspire others to live out his plan for them. For this also, Christ founded his church, to evangelize and change hearts, to catechize and educate minds, to convert and form souls. Then it is his heavenly kingdom dawns amongst us, his presence swells, his sovereignty rules our lives. Transforming God and King, renew your church in Australia today. Convert our hearts and align our deeds with your holy will so that your kingdom grows in our land. Finally, Christ, the teacher of prayer, tells us to pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be held holy. If he is our protector and provider, our converter and king, he is before all else our God all holy and totally other, the fruitful, loving, parental creator, the ultimate why of all that is, worthy of all worship and praise. We know that the first purpose of the church is the worthy worship of God and our plenary council will surely do all it can to ensure this takes place going forward in Australia. Creator God, renew your church so your name is known and your person honoured in every Australian heart. And so you are exalted as our holy, heavenly, fatherly God. If only it could be true, Marx's daughter prayed. If only it could be true that there is a God who is protector and provider, converter and king, totally other, yet totally for us. 
like a heavenly father. If only there were such a God. Well, Miss Marks, we the people of God in Australia respond. There is. If only it were true, she challenges us again, that his children hallowed his name, made his kingdom come, ensured his will was done, daily fed and forgave others, were fed and forgiven themselves, and were freed from all evil. For all that to be true, we must be our nation's powerhouse of prayer. Only through prayer can we hear, discern, converse, propose, decide. Only with such inspirations that we can make the decisions we must. But with true and deep prayer, we can face the dreams and difficulties head on in the grace of the Holy Spirit and the company of fellow believers, striking out with renewed conviction and humble confidence. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in Australia as it is in heaven. Offering this Holy Mass from the Mother Church of Australia, let us call upon our gracious and loving God to receive these prayers from the entire human family. For all people of faith, for whatever their religious tradition, they might acknowledge the interconnectedness of each one of us and so seek to be careful stewards of our created world and work together for the good of all who dwell in it. Lord, hear us. For those who bear the name of Christian, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they might truly put on the mind of Christ and through their words and actions, witness to the love of God, reaching out especially to the poor and suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all those gathered across Australia for this plenary council, that open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, they might confidently speak on behalf of many who have made submissions for consideration and work to make the church in Australia more truly the body of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For parish and diocesan leaders, that following the example of Jesus himself, they might serve in a spirit of humility and generosity, guiding those in their care to be people of love, healing, and peace. Lord, hear us. For all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith that as they share the joys of eternal life, they might inspire us to greater goodness as we strive to be the people of integrity, forgiveness, inclusion, and gratitude. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, as we offer our prayers for this plenary council, we thank you for your Son, the only conqueror of sin and death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who renew us in your image through your sacraments and your commandments, mercifully guide our footsteps in your paths, that through these sacrificial offerings which we bring, we may possess the gift of charity for which you have taught us to hope. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life, by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one, manifesting the covenant of your love. She dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for all eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven we worship constantly on earth, while with all the church as one for voice we hear claim. are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church which is in Australia by the light of the gospel Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Bishop, Terry and me, his unworthy servant, his assistant bishops, and the whole, whole order of bishops. In a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith in you alone we have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and the Martyrs, St. Mary of the Cross, MacKillop, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, for my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have received, O Lord, the sacrament of unity. Grant us, we pray, that living in your house in holy accord, we may possess the peace we hand on and preserve the peace we have received. Through Christ our Lord. My friends, after our final blessing, we'll pray together the plenary council prayer. So I ask you to remain with us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Come, Holy Spirit of Pentecost. Come, Holy Spirit of the great Southland. O God, bless and unite all your people in Australia and guide us on the pilgrim way of the plenary council. Give us the grace to see your face in one another and to recognize Jesus, our companion on the road. Give us the courage to tell our stories and to speak boldly of your truth. Give us ears to listen humbly to each other and a discerning heart to hear what you are saying. Lead your church into a hope-filled future that we may live the joy of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, bread for the journey from age to age. Amen. Our Lady, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Mary MacKillop, Pray for us.